Greetings. I pray that God's Word will give you hope and encouragement today. Welcome back, and here are the readings for day number 167. Second Samuel 16, Psalm 115, and Romans 16. Absalom first stole the hearts of all Israel by being a shrewd politician. Then he mounted a rebellion against his own father. David fled Jerusalem to avoid bloodshed, and as he left, he planted several carefully chosen people to work for him. 2 Samuel 16 When David had gone a little beyond the summit of the Mount of Olives, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, was waiting there for him. He had two donkeys loaded with two hundred loaves of bread, one hundred clusters of raisins, one hundred bunches of summer fruit, and a wineskin full of wine. "'What are these for?' the king asked Ziba. Ziba replied, "'The donkeys are for the king's people to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit are for the young men to eat.' The wine is for those who become exhausted in the wilderness. And where is Mephibosheth, Saul's grandson? The king asked him. He stayed in Jerusalem. He said, Today I will get back the kingdom of my grandfather Saul. In that case, I give you everything Mephibosheth owns. Ziba replied, I bow before you. May I always be pleasing to you, my lord the king. As King David came to Bahurim, a man came out of the village cursing him. It was Shimei, son of Gera, from the same clan as Saul's family. He threw stones at the king and the king's officers and all the mighty warriors who surrounded him. He shouted at David, Get out of here, you murderer, you scoundrel! The Lord is paying you back for all the bloodshed in Saul's clan. You stole his throne, and now the Lord has given it to your son Absalom. At last you will taste some of your own medicine, for you are a murderer. Abishai, son of Zeruiah, demanded, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over and cut off his head. No, the king said. Who asks your opinion, you sons of Zeruiah? If the Lord has told him to curse me, who are you to stop him? Then David said to Abishai and to all his servants, My own son is trying to kill me. Doesn't this relative of Saul have even more reason to do so? Leave him alone and let him curse, for the Lord has told him to do it, and perhaps the Lord will see that I am being wronged and will bless me because of these curses today. So David and his men continued down the road, and Shimei kept pace with them on a nearby hillside, cursing as he went and throwing stones at David and tossing dust into the air. The king and all who were with him grew weary along the way, so they rested when they reached the Jordan River. Meanwhile, Absalom and all the army of Israel arrived at Jerusalem, accompanied by Ahithophel. When David's friend Hushai the Archite arrived, he went immediately to see Absalom. He exclaimed, Long live the king! Long live the king! Absalom asked him, Is this the way you treat your friend David? Why aren't you with him? Hushai replied, I'm here because I belong to the man who is chosen by the Lord and by all the men of Israel. And anyway, why shouldn't I serve you? Just as I was your father's advisor, now I will be your advisor. Then Absalom turned to Ahithophel and asked him, What should I do next? Ahithophel told him, Go sleep with your father's concubines, for he has left them here to look after the palace. Then all Israel will know that you have insulted your father beyond hope of reconciliation, and they will throw their support to you. So they set up a tent on the palace roof where everyone could see it, and Absalom went in and had sex with his father's concubines. 
Absalom followed Ahithophel's advice, just as David had done. For every word Ahithophel spoke seemed as wise as though it had come directly from the mouth of God. I know I have said it a lot, but can't help saying it again. This is one of my favorite psalms. Our God is so different than idols. He is in heaven and does whatever he pleases. It's that line that I am so taken with. Psalm 115 Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name goes all the glory, for your unfailing love and faithfulness. Why let the nations say, Where is their God? Our God is in the heavens, and he does as he wishes. Their idols are merely things of silver and gold, shaped by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, and eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, and noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, and feet but cannot walk, and throats but cannot make a sound. And those who make idols will be just like them, and so will all who trust in them. O Israel, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. O priests, descendants of Aaron, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. All you who fear the Lord, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless the people of Israel and bless the priests, the descendants of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both great and lowly. May the Lord richly bless both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. The heavens belong to the Lord but he has given the earth to all humanity. The dead cannot sing praises to the Lord, for they have gone into the silence of the grave, but we can praise the Lord both now and forever. Praise the Lord. Having told of his plans to visit Rome on his way to Spain and how he must first go to Jerusalem, Paul now turns to greeting his friends in Rome. I really enjoy this section. There is real closeness in the family of God. When we call each other brother or sister, we really mean it, and our love and bonds of fellowship often span long distances. I enjoy seeing this in every phrase in this chapter. Romans 16 I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a deacon in the church at Sencrea. Welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people. Help her in whatever she needs, for she has been helpful to many and especially to me. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in the ministry of Christ Jesus. In fact, they once risked their lives for me. I am thankful to them, and so are all the Gentile churches. Also give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. Greet my friend Epinetus. He was the first person from the province of Asia to become a follower of Christ. Give my greetings to Mary, who has worked so hard for your benefit. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews, who were in prison with me. They are highly respected among the apostles and became followers of Christ before I did. Greet Ampliotus, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my dear friend Stachis. 
Greet Apelles, a good man whom Christ approves, and give my greetings to the believers from the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodion, my fellow Jew. Greet the Lord's people from the household of Narcissus. Give my greetings to Tryphena and Tryphosa, the Lord's workers, and to dear Persis, who has worked so hard for the Lord. Greet Rufus, whom the Lord picked out to be his very own, and also his dear mother, who has been a mother to me. Give my greetings to Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobas, Hermas, and the brothers and sisters who meet with them. Give my greetings to Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and to Olympus and all the believers who meet with them. Greet each other in Christian love. All the churches of Christ send you their greetings. And now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. Stay away from them. Such people are not serving Christ our Lord. They are serving their own personal interests. By smooth talk and glowing words, they deceive innocent people. But everyone knows that you are obedient to the Lord. This makes me very happy. I want you to be wise in doing right and to stay innocent of any wrong. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, sends you his greetings, as do Lucius, Jason, and Sosipater, my fellow Jews. I, Tertius, the one writing this letter for Paul, send my greetings too, as one of the Lord's followers. Gaius says hello to you. He is my host and also serves as host to the whole church. Erastus, the city treasurer, sends you his greetings, and so does our brother Quartus. Now all glory to God, who is able to make you strong, just as my good news says. This message about Christ Jesus has revealed his plan for you Gentiles, a plan kept secret from the beginning of time. But now, as the prophets foretold and as the eternal God has commanded, this message is made known to all Gentiles everywhere, so that they too might believe and obey him. All glory to the only wise God, through Christ Jesus forever. Amen. Let's pray together. All glory be to you, O God our Father. Thank you for these names in this chapter, the brothers and sisters who were so dear to Paul. They worked together to spread the good news. And they were fellow believers who had so much in common, especially the Holy Spirit in their hearts and in their lives. May we be like them, O Lord. And may we also watch out for those who cause divisions and avoid them. We would like to live in wonderful, Holy Spirit-directed harmony and unity. I pray, Father, that you would bind us together in love. Thank you, O Lord, that you make us strong. And all glory be to you, the only wise God, through Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen.